Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18, and this is episode 15, and this is called Double Decker Drama. And before we get into it, child, I feel like Orange County and Salt Lake City is 1A and 1B. Like, they're both for killing it. And um, I have high hopes for Potomac, and so far, I, I'm, it's a way and see still for Potomac, but like they're so far, they had a decent premiere and they had a second episode that was amazing. And I'm excited for the third episode, New York child. I ain't gonna hold you. I feel like they do need a cast change. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we're doing the New York recap about what I think they need to do, switch it up, but what they got going on right now, New York ain't it. But anyway, so that's not why we're here though. We're here for orange county and without further ado let's get into um the review so it is the next day in london um well after the um dinner fiasco and the ladies are getting ready for the day we see a have we have a mini montage where um heather and tamara are getting ready um with glam because they're in they're sharing they're they're, they're in the same room together because some of the housewives are roomed together and then we do have our fir first first ah we have our first official first scene, and this is with um, Emily and Shannon and the recapping, basically how dinner went left and why, and why um, you know, Shannon couldn't really let any of that stuff slide. And I, I don't understand why these ladies don't understand why Shannon cannot let things slide. She's going through a rough year, and we all know that Shannon is very emotional and kind of borderline unhinged how she handles her emotions or kind of doesn't so yeah why are we surprised but um you know they're just kind of really recapping the dinner and then from there we have another scene and we find out that all these things are dual scenes so there's another scene where we see katie and tamra they're doing a spa day and katie herself is also confused by how emotional shannon gets with the conflict and my whole thing is um katie have you not watched the housewives i feel like she has not watched the housewives um it's probably a good thing that she hasn't because it actually makes her a good housewife because if you watch it sometimes you overproduce and all that so it's probably a good thing that she doesn't but i mean none of us are surprised about how shannon is acting because this is shannon's mo and then tamra states that because they go from like how Shannon's reacting and all this stuff and, um, you know, how she walks away instead of just like, you know, basically staying present and staying within the conflict and kind of, you know, fighting back, if you will. But instead, you know, Shannon dis disengages and leaves. And I mean, there's a couple things going on. Shannon's probably lying a little bit. We all know that she probably isn't telling all the truth, but no one is. But, <laughs> you know, that's just how it is when it comes to these shows. But also, too, how are you going to really argue with someone that you know in your heart of hearts doesn't really like you? I think Katie still has not figured out that Tamara does, is friends of no one. She still hasn't figured that part out yet. But she will at some point when Tamara, you know, when it's your turn, basically, because it will be your turn. Tamara makes it a point to do this to everybody. But anyway, um... So Tamara states that um, Shannon lives beyond her means, which she probably does. But you know, at the end of the day, all of them do. I think she, really Tamara's probably the only one that maybe doesn't, but I don't believe that. I feel like, child, they all live beyond their means. But they're kind of talking about that too. And at the end of the day, <sighs> you know Tamara's just running her mouth about everyone else because she has no storyline herself. So that's what it is with that. Next, also in another dual scene, um, we have Jen and um, Gina. They're at like kind of, they're also in like the similar spa situation. And it seems like it's probably just a spa within the hotel. And they're at the pool area recapping the night. And um, because Jen asks, you know, asks Gina like why she left. Um, and it turns out, you know, that's when Gina explains like the, that, um, Shannon presented the receipts that um, Alexis, you know, did, was indeed involved in the lawsuit the first time. 
and like all the receipts and Tamara knew about the whole entire time. And Jen is shocked, but she isn't shocked. Um, in her confessional, Jen was on point. She's like, you know, Tamara is someone who really loves receipts. She relishes receipts. This is like what she lives for. But I think her need to take down Shannon trumps everything else. So she's just ignoring the receipts. And that's pretty much spot on. And in the dual scene, we see Tamara calling Shannon a victim for the upteenth time. Anyway, so then from there, um, we go back to Shannon and Emily. And Heather pays um, them a visit. And Heather basically states she doesn't like how things ended that night. But does not lead with a single apology. And I'm just like, Heather, girl. I mean, if it was me, I wouldn't have, I, there's no, there's no additional conversation needed because if you're not leading with an apology while we're here, there's nothing to talk about. But anyway, so then when Shannon is expressing how she was upset and why she was upset, because she exposed the conversation that she had, um, with Heather in private to the group. And she actually made it very clear. She did not want the rest of the group to know about the conversation. Um, Heather's excuse is like, well, she does this all the time and she's done this before. And it's like, Heather, let me get you together real quick. There's two things that are wrong with what you said right there. Number one, just because that's what she does does not control how you handle things. Number one. Number two, the other thing is when the producers were showing recaps of Shannon doing similar things before, that was not pertaining to her face being all messed up and crazy and stuff like that. That was not pertaining to that. Honestly, that was the first time us on the show heard about it. Now, if she told you about it behind the scenes and you, you know, if she told you about it behind the scenes and then she then in turn tells, tells you about it again on the camera, that's, that's still on you to just keep it to yourself. That still was never your business to tell. So the fact that you're trying to make excuses, that's a whole entire thing. And then also right then and there after she didn't say all this, of course, to her face this is on the confessional, but then she does deflect to her face about the um, Jeff Lewis interview. And it's like, why are y'all so, I don't understand what the, why is a Jeff Lewis interview such a big deal? I don't get it. Um, to me, it's just really, really weird. Um, but then Shannon gets kind of irritated that she's basically repeating herself. I mean, essentially, because Heather is asking, why don't you just pay him the money? And it's like, child, it's already been established. She's tried to do that multiple times. And number two, if it was me, I wouldn't pay him a damn thing. I would have never paid him anything. You know, when you're in a relationship with someone and you spend money on them during the relationship, which number one, she had to mess up when she was doing that. But in, in some people's opinion, me, I'm kind of similar to Shannon. I do um, also reciprocate and pay for things in a relationship, but I'm not going to pay for everything. It has to be like the way I see it. I see it is like 40, 20, sorry, not 40, 20. Wow. That was math. That was Steiner math. Um, <laughs> y'all, for those who watch wrestling, you get what you'll get that reference. But no, um, sixty. I would say sixty forty. Um, I feel like my significant other should pay for sixty percent of things, and I pay for forty. Sixty forty. <laughs> I kid. I kid. I kid. I would like it to be equal, but also. I don't know. I am kind of traditional where I want to be treated. So there's that. But anyway, the whole point is me bringing that up is once the relationship ends or if it does end, the game's a game. Like you chalk off what happened within that relationship to the game for the most part. Unless they did something truly vindictive, like crime based stuff, then yeah, of course that can linger on. But things, possessions, that kind of thing. That you keep to the relationship. And then once it's over with, you can't ask for things back. I mean, yes, I know in the past my petty self has, but I mean, that was a really toxic relationship, number one. And number two, I got it back because <laughs> I'm going to get whatever I asked for back. But that was definitely me speaking in my 20s. I would say in today's world, there's no way you would do that. Like, for example, 
my ex and I got each other a whole bunch of things. I didn't ask for any of those things back. I gave him all of his things that he gave me back because, well, minus one thing, because he was like, no, you can keep that. But I really wanted to give him everything back because I just, it had nothing to do with the cost of things. It was just like, I didn't want a reminder. I wanted it to be out of my house. And I just, you know, wanted to do all the things um, when it comes to like, have no memory. But that's neither here nor there. That's something completely different. But anyway, I bring that to say is, I don't understand why the rest of these ladies are not understanding that the fact that John's asking for this money is freaking ridiculous. And also too, Heather, what is your storyline? I'm going to need you to get your own storyline and stop with this because you being a mini Tamara ain't it. I'm just going to say it right now. But anyway, so from there, I know I ranted a little bit there. We do see that um, Shannon just kind of gets annoyed with the fact that she's having to defend herself again. So she goes and actually gets her receipts that she has for all the times she paid for things. Cause she did keep the receipts, but child are literally receipts like actual paper receipts and it's unorganized as all get out. So both, um, Heather and Emily proceed to laugh at her. Cause there's like, girl, you cannot bring in. I mean, you could bring in the court like that, but child get it together. And even Emily said in her confessional, she's like, oh my gosh, she really needs to get this together. I guess I was expecting it to be like an Excel spreadsheet, like in something like on QuickBook or something. But instead she just like has all these papers, it's all disorganized, it's all a hot mess. But like at the same time, y'all know Shannon. Why are you surprised that it's organized as a hot mess? Clearly she's a hot mess. I guess I'm not why I'm not sure why they're surprised. I wasn't. I was like, oh, that checks out. Anyway. From there, then we actually go back to Gina and Jen, and they're talking about Heather and how she was acting. And um, they both feel a way about how Heather felt a way about them not asking about how her mammogram went. And at first I'm just like, what? What is going on? Why are they being like this? Especially Jen, because Jen's a sweetheart on the show. But we find out that Heather was being another, was being a producer behind the scenes. And she actually text messaged the ladies that she did not want any of that stuff discussed on camera. So they didn't react be per her instructions in, in the text message. So, which now, honestly, to me, that makes more sense because out of everyone, I was really surprised that Jen didn't ask because of anyone, if anyone was to like, you know, be caring and overly ask how things are, it would be Jen. But really what the text message said was, um, Heather did not want to talk about her family history, of breast cancer on camera at all. So I think what the ladies were thinking, which I agree, this is how I translate it in order to avoid potentially even speaking about it all. Don't speak about it at all. And that's literally what they were going off of, you know, just to be on the safe side. They did because of the fact that Heather already reached out to him pre that scene that she's saying that she didn't want to talk about any of these things. So there's that, which to me, I feel like Heather knew what she was doing. She pretty much kind of sabotaged the ladies because she has nothing going on in my opinion. Um, and then from there we see that Gene, um, Gina then tells Jen about how both Heather and Tamara were talking about her dress that she was wearing at um, Shannon's party um, and her finances. And Jen is taken completely aback and is completely hurt by the things. Now, I kind of want to know what you guys think about your thoughts about Gina being the one who brings this up, considering that Gina has been critical about Jen's finances this whole entire time. Um, I think Jen looking back will not feel a way about it because I think the difference is, is that both Gina and, um, and, um, Emily have to her face stated their feelings. So them, them still being critical would not be surprising to Jen because Jen already knows how they feel about it. But it's the fact that Heather on paper has presented as if like she doesn't feel a way about it, but then doing all the things behind her back, um, kind of making sly comments, which is just as bad as um, Gina, Gina and um, Emily, but isn't getting, you know, 
the backlash for it. I mean, she will now because now it's out there. And honestly, I'm so glad that to a certain degree, uh, I hate to do this. I'm not really a Gina fan. You already know I'm not really a Gina fan, but I love, I don't really love that Gina's one who brought it up. But I'm glad that it's been brought to the light to Jen that Heather was on the exact same BS in time as they were, but yet you, you're, you're not, you're not knowing that. So now she knows come the reunion. I hope Jen gets all them ladies together. I really, really do. But anyway, from there, then you see in the same dual scene that Tamara and um, Katie are also talking about the same thing. But Katie at least adds context and, you know, has a girl's back. I'm like, thank you, Katie, for having a girl's back because I was worried for a minute. And so I was like, no, actually, Ryan's the one who got her the dress. So it's all good. But the problem is, uh, Tamara, like a disease, already put her sense of doubt to Katie. So Katie's already kind of look at the situation funny because she doesn't trust Ryan anymore because of Tamara. And, but I hopefully Katie does have a conversation with Jen later on expressing all these things. That way this is no surprise because the reason why I'm hoping that is Katie and Jen so far in this season, their friendship and the blooming of their friendship has been very refreshing for me. It's been one of my favorite things about the show. And I don't want it to end or get messed up all because of Tamara's BS. But anyway, Tamara then takes up on herself um, because Katie does ask more questions about the Ryan and uh, FBI situation. And Tamara tells it as if it's like her story. And it's not. And But we're not so surprised about it. And then in the dual scene, we see Gina and Jen asking about Tamara. And Jen has made it clear she is done with Tamara. She, ain't, she is not having it with her anymore. So we already know where this is going to go. <laughs> we already know it is not going to go well. But we, we know. Anyway. So all the ladies are finally getting ready and they um, go on this. They basically get some tiaras and um, I forgot what you call it. Like, um, oh, oh, I don't know. Whatever. Shannon has them like with a tiara and then like um, kind of like dress like royalty. They're kind of looking silly, um, but it's fine. Because they're not really walking around or anything like that. They're actually going to go on this double-decker bus um, to sightsee. And so we see um, them just like kind of taking pictures and selfies of them sightseeing everywhere. And then um, Gina brings up the mammogram situation to Heather. And Heather was just so not understanding of why Gina feels weird about how that didn't make any sense. And the thing is with Heather is that I'm starting to just feel way about. And honestly... What has changed my opinion about Heather especially was that that hot mic moment, and I hate to keep bringing it up, but that will be living in my head rent-free because now, to me, it seems like that you're fake. And so I'm kind of getting that vibes, and the producers are producing to make it seem like that's what you are. You're fake. And it... I wasn't on the side of Gina and I'm really not really on the side of Gina either when it comes to this. I think y'all both wrong in different ways, but now this, the argument goes from like basically the mammogram situation to then Heather, then I know where I hell Mary brings up the um, Katie situation. And then Gina does the same thing and brings up the watch what happens live situation where, uh, Andy shaded um, Gina because a question was about who on the house um, probably probably cannot resell their house, um, and the ans and um, basically um, Heather didn't make a comment on it, but then Andy Cohen said, "Oh, it's probably Gina," and Gina um, and Gina felt away about that because really after that um, Heather didn't really say anything to defend her. And it was kind of messed up. So, um, but then Heather feels is in defensive mode. And it's like, so why are you bringing something up that happened months and months later? And it's just like, well, you are literally doing the same thing, bringing something up that you we thought was resolved. 
So, I mean, honestly, it's just tit for tat. And, but really, Gina, I think, is done trying to be friends with Heather. And I'm kind of like, good, because it really seemed forced anyway. Um, it never really was a good look for Gina to try to be Heather's friend. It really, to me, only benefited Heather, in my opinion, looking back. And yes, it kind of did benefit Gina because, of, you know, we know that Gina doesn't have, um, isn't as financially well off as the rest of the ladies. So you have it where basically Heather can help you out with these things. And then also Heather is affluent enough where she can like help you be seen but at the end of the day, they're all housewives. They're all on the show. I mean, does Gina really need all that? No. And it doesn't seem like, at least from what I'm seeing, that's not what she values the most anyway, especially how now that she's making her own money, maybe she's like also saying, well, look, I'm doing better now. I don't necessarily need this friendship, which is kind of being a user to a certain degree. So I think Gina might also be, or might was a user at some point in time. So it, it just seems like there's a lot going on with this, but in this, in this situation, I don't think either of them are right. And it's very clear to me that Heather is very much um, team Tamara because Tamara then chimes in, in the background, like, oh my gosh, this argument's so exhausting, kind of making a comment towards Gina. And then literally um, Heather repeats literally this exact same statement. This is exhausting. And I'm just like, oh God heard you and so then i think gina emily and then i forgot who else i didn't see who else they got off the bus to go shopping because i think some of the ladies are going to split off now but that's where we left off at so um next um we have the ladies and um, i think i did mention earlier that some ladies got off the bus they actually all ended up getting off on the bus so we had um shannon emily gina and Jen, they're kind of getting some street food. And then from there, they end up, um, they do end up at this Tudor um, costume shop because we know that Shan likes costumes and they do like this photo shoot. And the, all the ladies minus Jen went to the restroom. So she picked up the out, picked out the outfits. And I love Jen. For those who don't know, I love Jen. Y'all, y'all clearly know this, but um, Jen, she had a reason why she picked every single outfit and she had compliments for everyone. So she was like, so um, Emily, because she's just sexy, she gets the corset. And then she was like, and um, Gina, she's up and coming. So she gets this nice up and coming outfit. And, you know, um, Shannon, she's a queen, of course. So she gets a queen outfit. And this big dick energy that is me, I get to be the king. I was like, yes, Jen. I love that we're seeing more of the sassy side of Jen. And I can't wait to see more of it. But anyway, so sh they're doing this. And while they're doing that, and they seem like they're actually having fun. On the other side, it is like literally Tamara and Heather. And then Katie literally looking like the third wheel. And I feel like she really was actually the third wheel. Um, they're doing shopping, but they're like shopping at like, you know, kind of expensive, kind of the posh looking places, which again, it seems like it's definitely something that Heather would like and maybe even Tamara would like, but it's just kind of annoying. And like, really, again, I kept forgetting Katie was there cause she just literally was kind of came off as a third wheel. And then we do end up having the ladies, they recap what just literally happened on the bus. And Gina's like, I have never been gaslit so much in my life. And honestly, despite how you might feel about Gina, she's not wrong at this moment. She actually truly was gaslit. I was like, child, what is happening? And so from there, you see this mini alliance happening. It's kind of interesting because from there, then we see Shannon is talking, you know, with Emily about what happened when she was talking to Heather this morning. She's like, the same thing kind of happened to me. Like, what is that about? And then Jen's like, yeah, and the same thing happened to me with my dress. It's really kind of messed up. So they're all, all four of them ladies are one chord when it comes to, oh, no, 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 Gina. And um, I mean, it comes, comes to them when they're just like, Heather and Tamara, no, we're not going to have this with them. And then on the other side, you kind of just see Tamara and 
Heather just, I don't know. Them t I ain't gonna hold you. Seeing them two together makes me realize what's wrong with the show. <laughs> because as much as I love um, Orange County, them two are not the reason why Orange County is doing so well. Especially Tamara. Tamara can go. And honestly, Heather's literally doing the exact same thing. And, and like the past couple episodes, especially, it's been really obvious she's doing it. Um, they're overproducing them too. And also, what are their storylines? Them two. They don't have one. Really, the only people that have a storyline on this show is really Jen and. I mean, really, Jen and Shannon. And then Gina tried to give us a storyline, but we didn't really care about it. And then Emily even tried to give us a storyline, but we didn't really care about it. Like, there's, they, they have, like, some, they have something going on. Both of them do, but it's just not strong enough where we really care about it. It's really Shannon and Jen that's carrying the show and have been for the past, really, two seasons. And neither of them, em, um, sorry, neither of them, which is, like, Tamara and um, Heather are sharing any of their personal lives. And it's quite, as a viewer, it's kind of annoying. And we, it, it, it's very obvious that that's happening. And Shannon kind of even said it in the scene when she was talking to the ladies. Like, you mind your own, like, basically, she said it without saying it on the show. And I love that she even called it out. But anyway, that's where we left off at was literally that. So the ladies are, I'm getting land up to go to dinner. Um, and the dinner place they went to, I think it was called Spear. It looked really, really nice and kind of, oh my gosh, it was a vibe. I, it, yeah, <laughs> it makes me, this trip does actually make me want to go to London, uh, which is ironically the opposite of every single reboot um, Roni trip that they've had. I don't want to go anywhere that they are at because their trips seem horrible. But anyway, and, and that's, I, I, I hate to do that, but I'm just going to call a thing a thing. But anyway, moving on, <laughs> um, Gina does um, lead a toast, you know, saying, hey, although they have bumpy roads, let's, we're here for Shan's birthday. Happy birthday. Um, as they're at dinner. And then Tamara does briefly ask Shannon about what Shan's girls are doing. They're in Paris. And then we find out the girls are going to come to Shannon's hotel to visit her briefly. And then they're going to go on their merry way. So she does, she will get to see her daughters. And we knew that from the previous episode. Um, and then from there, um, Jen confronts um, Heather immediately. And Heather backpedals, completely backpedals. And um, Gina is just like, the look on her face is pri priceless because she's like, oh my gosh, she is lying. And I hate to do this, but I agree with Gina. I do not believe Heather is sorry because the thing is, sorry, don't come back quickly. She said all that super quickly. She had an excuse. It was not real, true, or genuine. And hopefully Jen doesn't take her apology seriously at all. I want Jen to have similar energy she has with Heather with Tamara because to me it's 1A 1B at this point the way they're they've been acting on this trip acting a whole entire fool give it to them and then from there Jen then moves on to Tamara and Tamara apologizes right away because she doesn't want the smoke at the moment when it comes to that very clearly and um you know Jen Jen stands her ground she stands her ground um and we think this is it when it comes to this, but we know it's not. Um, but so anyway, Jen's like, you know what? I don't want you to say these things, this, that, and this, and that. Like, Ryan's my partner, so therefore he's a reflection of me. So by you talking bad about him, you're actually talking bad about me. I'm going to need you to stop doing that. And she kind of shuts it down. But Emily does have a point because... I think the women are looking, a lot of the women are looking at Jen kind of weird because she's like, you know, saying she hasn't, she's having all these finance problems and stuff like that, but yet she is spending money. And I think what Emily is saying is that it just looks like she's trying to present herself as something she's not. But I think this is probably actually how Jen really is. And she may not just be good with managing money. And it is what it is. But at the end of the day, she's a grown woman and it's her business. 
And um, I think that's Jen, I think at this point kind of made a point to like, stay out of it. It is what it is. Um, anyway, so then from there, then we see that Shannon and um, Emily, really Shannon first is talking to Tamara about like, so you knew about the fact that Alexis was definitely the one who took a part in this lawsuit, but yet you're not, you're not saying all that. You're basically making it like Alexis has no faults in any of this and she's perfect. And I'm the one with all the faults. And, um, Tamara's like, no, it's not that. Like she had this excuse that was like not even anything. And then again, um, Emily kind of being the voice of reason, she's like, well, no, like Emily is very clear that, um, why you have all this smoke about, you know, Shannon being the liar, this, that, and this, and that, but you don't have any of that same energy for, um, Alexis, which clearly she's lying too when it comes to a lot of this as well. And which is very, very true. And then Tamara just, it went from good to like nasty right away because it's Tamara. And she tries to put in um, Shannon's face that Shannon talks bad about her because Shannon says, stop talking about me. And Shannon's like, well, and Tamara's like, well, you stop talking about me. You said this, that, and this, and that. And the thing is, they had to go all the way back to the very, very first episode of um, Shannon saying that about her. Shannon hasn't said anything really about Tamara, not like not unprovoked anyway. And but then she did it at that moment. She's like, well, you do have an ego. So I'm not going to even act like you don't have an ego because you do. And then um, Tamara's clap back is, well, the same person has the ego who won't pay the money. And it's like, oh, my God, why are we going back on this? And then Tamara's extra rude saying bye, 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 kept putting her hand on her face. And see, again, Shannon, you're a better person than me. As soon as Tamara would put her hand in my face the first time, Hands would have got thrown on her. It, it would have been over with. Screen black. We would have got kicked out of that place. It would have been bad. I would have ruined it for everybody. That's just me. Anyway. But then she's like, and then she's telling her bye. And it's like, no. Honestly, I, this is the part that I don't get. I really want, I, I, I would love if Shannon had enough of a backbone. I mean, to do a little bit more of a demure way. Just kick her off the trip. It's your trip. Kick her off the trip. But again, we probably wouldn't have. No, we still would have conflict. Kick her off the trip. Anyway, um, but that's where it ends. So it's the, so basically, um, oh, so the ladies go back to the hotel, like after all that happens, um, to the hotel bar. And um, Emily has this fun game where all the ladies um, text her significant others and um, all send a message that we're going to get naked, that I'm getting, that we're getting, that we're all getting naked just to see what everyone's reactions were. And it was cute. It was funny. But at the same time, I kind of felt bad because Shannon was kind of left out of the equation because she's the only one that doesn't have anyone. And so she does like kind of bow out like, like, Hey, I got to go to bed. I'm going to get going. And so she leaves for the night while the rest of the ladies do end up going back to like, um, I think one of the rooms and just kind of party a little bit. And they all were up really late. They're up to like 4am. It was kind of wild. Um, but then after that, it's the next day and we have, um, we see the, well, actually before the next day, I think right before they all went to bed, um, we see that Katie um, is FaceTiming her family and then Jen FaceTimes Ryan and Ryan is just kind of being a flirt like he always is. And then after that, we do get end up going to the, the next day. <clears throat> By the way, I'm doing a good job of reserving what's, what happened because child is getting good. But <laughs> anyway, the next day we see that Tamara and Heather are recapping Shannon and basically just, um, freaking fracking it, like just being annoying as hell. And then on the other side, we see that Jen, actually it is, um, Gina, Shannon and, um, Emily, they're recapping Tamara and how she was acting and just being kind of annoyed. And then, um, we do see after that, um, that actually,
actually no it was jen it wasn't um emily because emily and tamra actually went out to go and get some smoothies the next day and then from there then um as they're doing this emily is still trying to be the voice of reason hold it together she's like why do you continue to attack um you know shannon you really just be the bigger person and she's not doing it she refuses to do it and it's just this cycle that's really annoying and toxic and just team too much and um shannon is still just talking about how you know this is tamra what you're seeing with her is how she is because jen even though jen saw it firsthand last season um she's now really seeing how tamra really is especially how she is towards um um shannon it's 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 gotten a lot worse this season than last season which with with tamra there really is no not getting it worse and side note bravo i would love it if you would if you are to keep tamra on because i feel like y'all just want to keep tamra tamra on the show another season um i want you to bring back gretchen yeah bring back gretchen and let's truly take tamra down I'm sorry. I'm just ready for Tamara to go, but I don't want, I want her to go the way she went out the first time where she went out sad. She deserves to go out sad the way she acts. Like it's just the way she is on the screen. She's so vile. I don't believe that she's a good person. Like it, it doesn't seem like it's an act. It seems like that's just how she is. Um, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> And then maybe, you know, she can still be in the Bravo, like in the um, NBC Universal universe. Like put her on the House of Villains. Like she belongs on there. Anyway, so then um, Shannon takes a step further, you know, besides, you know, explaining this is how Tamara is to Jen and says, you know what? She does this with everyone. You think she's just doing this with me? She's been talking bad about you this whole entire time. And I have the receipts. And we're like, oh. <laughs> and Jen is like taking it back, like, wait a minute, what? And like, you no, know, Shan's like, no, no, I have the receipts. I'm like, it's tax season, show it. And um, then we see that Tamara literally decided to do a background check on Ryan and show the receipts that she did a background check. And Jen is livid rightfully so and literally goes all the way off she calls her trash she calls her single she's like is giving single white female which i called that out last season i feel like it is single white female she wants your life so bad and i think tamra can't stand that like eddie the way eddie looks at jen because i look back i went back to the episode jen eddie looks at jen the way eddie probably used to look at tamra when he first met tamra I just have that feeling. I get those vibes because Jen is just one of those people clearly, at least based off the show that she just has an amazing spirit. Like, yes, yeah, she's pretty aesthetically, but like you could, it's, it's that's her inside and out. Whereas Tamara's hiding the ugly that is inside, but now we all know that she's ugly. Like we just know this about her anyway. So Jen goes all the way off and gina and shannon are like wow um, shannon's like i'm gonna go now i dropped the bomb i'm out so <laughs> and um what and what um shannon's actually doing she's gonna go see her daughter so she is out and um yeah gina's just like wow and then we see that jen leaves that leaves the room and goes directly to Tamara's door and just starts knocking. And that's where, yeah. Oh man, it's getting good. It, it is getting good. Oh man. So basically, Jen, once Jen gets in there, she goes berserk and goes completely off of Tamara. And Tamara has nothing to say. She has nothing to say. She backpedals, she lies, she backpedals, she lies. And she gets all mad because at this point, Jen is not letting her speak at all. And she looks like a complete clown. And she knows she looks like a complete clown. Honestly, I ain't gonna lie. 
I normally don't talk about people's looks, but like, <laughs> because she was getting her makeup done, she looked like literally a troll. And um, yeah, Jen got her together and Heather just kept trying to like chime in and Jen was not having it. She's like, no, you sit there. And <laughs> she went all the way off, went off on her and oh, she ate that up. And at the very end, she's like, you know, my kids are good. My family's good. I just move into this man's house with all of my kids. And <laughs> because, and then what gets me is as she's going off on her and she said that at the very end and ate that, Tamara being so thinking she's so smarter than everyone else, she missed that last read. She, she totally missed that last read about like, yeah, I have my whole entire families with me. And so... And then she, she said what she said and got up out of there and called her a bitch at the very end. I was like, wow. And then Heather was just like, oh my gosh, that was a lot. And then she was, and then <laughs> mean and evil, because I'm about to call Tamara and like Heather mean and evil at this point, because I do not like this team. I don't like it at all. And um, Heather was like, I just didn't know she can get that loud. Like just saying all this low brow, annoying ass stuff, thinking it's cute and it's not. And preview for the next episode baby it's gonna get good because this leaves it totally ends as a to be continued and <laughs> i think um yeah the uh, all the girls are getting sick of her um really yeah they're all, they're all getting sick of her they're all getting sick of tamra so it looks like the next episode it is gina going off on tamra as well um, the way it looked, I don't know, because apparently there's rumors swirling about Gina and Travis. So, ooh, it's getting good. It's getting good. Um, yeah, but that does conclude the episode for Real Housewives of Orange County. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.